Our priority is to get the Iron Man weapon turned over to the United States of America. I am Iron Man. The suit and I are one. Contrary to popular belief, I know exactly what I'm doing. Uh, Tell what? us about it, Corey. What, what's this movie about? He doesn't know. He fell asleep the whole time. I know. <laughs> it's about, it's about that, robots. That was a test. <laughs> I, no, I was awake for the first 30, 40 minute kick ass part of the movie. Then I fell asleep after that. Nah, you know, I, I mean, it's Iron Man. What do people want to know? <laughs> I, because really, seriously, yeah, I mean, this movie could be about anything. That, yeah. that would have been my synopsis. Well, it's about Iron Man, and this time there's two of them. It's, it's so. just like Iron Man, but two. <laughs> yes. but there's two instead of one. Yes, the a bunch of ivory uh, version of yeah. of, fight, He fights a bunch of tin men. That yeah. was a missed opportunity, to be fair. Because, yeah, you've got James Rhodes playing War Machine and Tony Stark as Iron Man. Yeah, they totally should have had a party at the end of the movie where they do Ebony and Ivory. That would have oh, been yeah. awesome. Yeah. Iron Man 2 Electric <laughs> or, At the very least, <laughs> silver and gold. Hey, they could have, <laughs> could have posed as Miami Vice cops. <laughs> yeah. I mean, let's, let's just run through all the black and white <laughs> cliches. I agree with that. No, <laughs> Play we could be. We don't have all night, Leon. <laughs> no, Ebony and Ivory were at the blowing up shit. I mean, because that's what it could have been called, Iron Man Two, blowing up shit. Yeah. I mean, because that's what people yeah, really want to see. But so, does it really matter what we have to say? Well, for me, it does. So <laughs> I'm gonna speak my piece. And here. anyone who knows Corey knows that you're going to have to hear his point. Anyway. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Don't, don't cut that shit off yet. No, no, you listen to me. God, man, get real. Everybody now. Man, everybody kick that. Kick <laughs> in. Get comfortable. This could be a while. Well, and this, <laughs> this is Iron Man 2. And in the first Iron Man, we have Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark, who is this genius, famous, industrialist whiz kid. And this that was his origin story about yes. how he became Iron Man. Now, with this one, we're full-fledged Iron Man here, and we're given a bigger villain. Uh, what's his name? A homeless guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. With no, no. bling. Are you talking about Whiplash Russia. or, or uh, Justin Hammer? Well, th- we're going to get to that in a little bit, but we're, we're going to go with the real super villain here, which is Whiplash. Oh, oh Gary Black. Shandling, oh, the, sen- the senator <laughs> that wants to take the armor away from him. Well, you know, it's funny because uh, Gary Shandling and Mickey Rourke are starting to look kind of alike. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, but yeah. No, we get Whiplash, who looks very different from the comic book. It looks like a guy who turned 50 and couldn't get out that Jersey Shore look. <laughs> he looks like he's on his way to a rave or something. Yeah. <laughs> With, with his glow whips, he couldn't like, like, like they, he couldn't decide whether he wanted to be like the club kid or the rap kid, you know. <laughs> and he failed miserably yeah. on both. I know he still has that hair from the wrestler left over. Yeah, it's somebody just too scared to tell him to cut that <laughs> shit. No, in this we have Mickey Rourke playing Ivan Vlanko, a Russian guy who was somehow we won't go into it, but feels like he was wrong not only by Tony Stark but by Tony Stark's legacy, his father, his 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 his, his past has somehow done something to him, and he's out for re- some kind of revenge and yeah and then we get other and you people. can tell he's a genius by the fact he's covered head to toe in tattoos has a bunch yeah. of gold teeth and yeah. <laughs> and just says yeah. so much smart things that he's the one guy in the world who can manufacture yeah. from scratch start tech i think each <laughs> test he passed like going to school yeah he got a tat for each test. Uh, yeah maybe yeah, that's yeah, where yeah. the blueprints are or that's what <laughs> yeah. those tattoos are i know because in the movie they kind of hint that he was exiled somehow to siberia through circumstances and it's like you know in Siberia they ain't got shit so it's like the moment he got like to some civilization he didn't give it he made up for it he got tattoos all over his body (laughs) dyed his hair bought the craziest clothes he could find got him some gold teeth and yeah yeah, just went to town but he's like that chick that goes to downtown for the first time and just (laughs) he's like drunk and gets tattooed he's like that ugly chick that goes to downtown yeah Yeah. because if he was a chick he'd be one ugly chick he does does he's not a pretty man well it's it's the facelifts that make him look like a chick yeah make him look like an Asian chick as a matter of fact with that hair and everything he does kind of look like that uh, like that ugly chick you just like be wasted at the end of the night and be like oh Okay, let's go. But you know, he wow. went, be funny. You you break that, take that chick home, and you wake up and it's Mickey Rourke. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Tell hey, me wow. more about it, that, Corey. You're, you're making this a confessional. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you keep saying uh, you. Yeah, and uh, we we all know who yeah. you're talking and about. And that wouldn't be funny, yeah. by the way. That would be <laughs> I, horrifying. I find this more interesting than the review, right? <laughs> yeah, please uh, continue. <laughs> no, what, what what else would do, does you do? <laughs> yeah. uh, you have never fucked Mickey Rourke. No. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, but wow. that, that's the one. Of, that's just one of the villains that we have here now. Mm. For the others, in ascending Tony, order of danger. Well, Tony Stark is he's facing things from the political end and also from another industrialist guy, Justin Hammer. And everybody wants his technology either because they think it's a threat as a weapon or they think that it could help them get on top. So he's got the government. He's got Whiplash, he's got Justin Hammer, and he's got his own health. I was going to gonna say, you're forgetting about the biggest villain of all, 
Tony death. Stark himself. <laughs> Not death. Oh, sorry. <laughs> hey, you, did you consider Tony Stark a bigger villain than death? Well, if you watch the whole middle of this film, which I can understand if you missed large parts of it by taking naps, because not a lot happens. I'm not saying you were. I'm just saying I wouldn't blame you if you had. The movie's all about him just sort of not knowing what the hell to do and fucking up and getting drunk and being kind of a loser. Well, well, you are true. There is another villain in this movie. Maybe villain is harsh. There is another opposing factor here, and it is Tony Stark being somewhat self-destructive. Half of it is because he just doesn't care because he feels like his life might be over soon. And the other half is that he's they hint that he might be having a drinking problem, which everybody who reads the comics knows that Tony Stark is an alcoholic. They don't really like make they don't say alcoholic in this movie. They just try to bring that element in. I it, thought they well, kind of shoehorned that whole thing in. To be yeah. honest, it, 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 it was more like they piggybacked it. They just like yeah. like well, he's kind of self destructive anyway, and we'll just make him having a party where he goes too far. Uh, you know, part yeah. of it, which you know, I mean, Fatty Arbuckle, who, the ghost of Fatty Arbuckle, would be like, dude, stop, get these people out of here, don't do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, Hey, dude, you really fucked up. Uh, quit driving that car in the middle of this huge fucking well, crowd. They obviously don't want to do the serious alcoholic story, and you can't blame them. I mean, sure. for not wanting to do that. And this is as close as they wanted to get to it. But even yeah. so, it felt like kind of a cop out. It was like, wow, this is just you're making him just kind of a pussy instead of having a real serious drinking problem like he did in the comic. And I'm not sure how to feel about this. He's just irritating me at this point. Well, yeah. what's interesting is the movie opens up with him. You know, he's he's like arrogant to the max to where like, okay. I know this guy's the protagonist and he's funny, but he is kind of an asshole. And I want to be on his side, but I'm not sure I like him anymore. Yeah, maybe he's too much of an asshole right. at this point. When the first film, you're like, he's that likable prick. He's right. that guy who's going to be jokey. He's going to you know, maybe even make fun of you a little bit, but he's still going to save your ass and pay for all the hookers and blow. Right. Yeah. You know that guy yeah. You know that guy that Bruce Wayne becomes when he wants to get people the fuck out of his yes. house when yeah. he's with a party? <laughs> yeah. He became that guy. Yeah. Yeah. That's really That's real. Yeah. 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 Like, that, was, that was him for real, not him playing around. Oh, yeah. No, it's like I think they made a mistake by saying, oh, everybody likes this really cocky uh, Tony Stark because... Because, hey, Robert Downey Jr. plays it well, and it kind of took a little bit too far in this one. Even so, there are points that it was really working where it felt like it was a sort of like superhero James Bond. And I was really enjoying that. The yeah. jet setting, going to giant parties, like just awesome lifestyles. Like, hell yeah, I'm on board with this guy. But then he'd turn around to someone and he'd be like, fuck you, I'm Tony Stark, I do what I want. <laughs> yeah, like, he kind of oh. was. I mean, he's, yeah. he really became that rich prick that you hate. Yeah, yeah. no. You, I don't you, touch people. I don't let people get close to me. Just, which is not... Put those... Put Put that fucking box of strawberries in my car. Hurry up. I got to play. <laughs> yeah, it was that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He had that whole, like, yeah, I don't touch people thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. but one thing I thought was interesting, like, they showed, you know, footage of his, his dad, Howard Stark. Where they kind of mix, make him a mix between Howard Hughes and Walt Disney. Yeah, he does that, look like that. That's yeah. true. Yeah, he does. I mean, that was that was always kind of like the deal in the comics. They hinted that he was kind of a Howard Hughes type because even Tony Stark was based on Howard Hughes when he was created. So he just took it all away. And it's John Slattery from Mad Men who plays his dad. Yeah. Uh, you know, I. I have some really major complaints in this from this movie, and let me just say first: all these people who said that this movie was terrible, unwatchable, was was uh, was a failure. That that's not true. I mean, this yeah. movie has a great beginning. I think, like like I said, the first the first thirty or forty minutes of this movie is what we want to see in both. Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark, and in an Iron Man movie because we get a lot of Iron Man scenes sure. too, and. After this really bad scene, and I thought it was kind of bad. It, it could have been cool, but it was a bad scene where Don Cheadle as Rody Rhodes comes in. Jim and, Rhodes. I'm, I'm, Rhodes. I'm, Rhodes? I'm, I'm, I'm what sorry. is this, a Warner Brothers cartoon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, well, you, you, you can call him Rody Rhodes. You, know, you just got to put it in quotes. Yeah. There you go, Rody Rhodes. Rody no, Rhodes. When, he, when he comes in, he puts on the Iron Man suit just out of nowhere. Doesn't know how to work it, doesn't yeah. know what to do. And then they come in and they do this real bad fighting song and dance number while they're playing a remix of DJ DJ AM from, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Some, some crazy remix of some yeah. uh, club mix in the background and mm-hmm. I thought like wow this is uh, this is this is where the movie's kind of dipping low and then the movie got kind of dull. I mean, Whoa. they, yeah, they, they, I mean, I don't know what was going on. I don't know. It was because I don't want to blame the movie for talking because you know, I don't want to see just action going on, but there was a lot of unnecessary dialogue going on. I think this is what, this is what I believe. This is a good movie that is, that suffers from what we see over and over with a lot of sequels. Well, you have that origin story, which is so great because they know exactly what to do with that. That second film, they don't really know what to do, so they put in a little bit too much. 
Yeah. Uh, also, what they uh, they do a lot of times with sequels is they remake the first movie, and this isn't necessarily a remake, but it's so much of the same of what we've seen before that there's not a lot of surprises. I mean, I still think this is a good movie, and I enjoyed it, but there are all those problems, and one of the the problems of sequelitis that this movie has to me is too many characters. Because yeah. as much as everybody's excited about seeing Samuel Jackson as Nick Fury, I'm like, to me, I was like, you could take him out of this movie, and it'd be better. Matter of fact, it'd be more time to develop Mickey Rourke's character. Yeah, you're yeah. only saying that because you're still hoping there won't be an Avengers film. <laughs> You won't owe me 50 bucks. They they (laughs) shove it down our throats every time. They they, they hijack the movie. Mm -hmm. They they hijack part of the story just to shove in like, hey, but we got the Avengers coming up. It's like, don't do a commercial in the middle Uh, of this movie. I I completely agree. Uh, Even though I found the film to be a fun film to watch, it's definitely a summer film. But yeah, it suffers from, yeah, just uh, there's too many cameos and too many uh, too many hints of the Avengers films where they yeah. kind of bash you over the head with it. And I'm like, you know, especially introducing this uh, Black Widow character where I'm like, you know what? This could have worked if they just took out all the elements of Nick Fury and his team. If they would have took that out and just, you know, made it a surprise as far as Scarlett Johansson's character, as far as, you know, she, when, she, when she actually suits up, if they just had that in there without explaining to you that she was part of a team and like having those scenes where she's sitting down with Samuel Jackson, I thought it would have been more effective for a character. You would have been more excited than them just you know telling you exactly you know uh explaining to you every bit of this whole avengers subplot that you know really doesn't have anything to do with the iron man movie right you know if they would have been more subtle it would have been more exciting but yeah there's a lot of characters that they do, do throw in here and i had the biggest problem was that scene that you just described Corey, where they have Rhodes just throwing on the suit with no real explanation, you know, fact, he, he yeah. just throws it on. In fact, later and, on, they even give the movie a chance to explain itself, mm-hmm. and they yeah. don't. And yeah, it makes me don't. feel like there was a scene missing because they point yeah. blank, mm-hmm. like ask Tony Stark, "What's the deal, dude? You just yeah. leave them open the suits with anyone can get in, and he doesn't say anything." And it you're seems like, like he's Hello? about to give an explanation, but then he just kind of <laughs> yeah. just kind of skirted around it. I, but but it's that scene that you know that's how I felt like you know you know what this whole scene right here it seems like they're sh- shoehorning. Two important plots that you know could be a whole another story, which is uh, Tony Stark's alcohol problem and the whole Rhodes character becoming a war machine. You know, yeah, and you know something, you were so right about the, all that Avengers stuff. As excited I was to see them like give hints of the Avengers in the movie, I want to see it be introduced in a clever way. Right. This is not clever. This is marketing. It yeah. is, it is, and you know, and I honestly felt like Samuel Jackson was really just phoning it in. Hey boy, was he ever! I mean, he wow. emailed it in. I, yeah. I can't disagree with what you're saying, but at the same time, as a big geek looking forward to the Avengers movie, I was still happy to see that stuff anyway. I mean, I admit, yeah, a lot of it did seem phoned in, and even like, why isn't this just in the Avengers movie instead of being here? Yeah, but especially the surprise post credits ending thing, where you're like, really? <laughs> I sat through the credits for that? <laughs> okay, were we, were we all <laughs> underwhelmed by that scene? Yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> to, to say the least. There's a lot of bad stuff I could say about but that's for another time. Uh, I, I will say that we haven't said shit about what's good about this movie, and I know none of us are giving it a rental or some old bullshit. No, so let's no, talk no. about what we liked about well, it. Well, like I said, barely mentioned I, I did say that the first 40 minutes. I mean, I went into detail about what I liked about it because it's really just the first 40 minutes and the climax that I like. And even then, the climax is kind of silly. Oh, but see, I think the climax beats the crap out of the opening, it, personally. Well, I thought the climax was the climax that we wanted in the first film. You're, down, you're right about that. That should have happened, and you were like, wow, that. that that was it. That wasn't as cool as the other stuff in the first film. And then here, you're like, I was getting worried the middle was so slow. I was going, man, I'm this thing is dropping rating points by the second mm-hmm. until all of a sudden it goes, oh, yeah, I forgot. We're making an Iron Man movie right. and switches totally into fifth gear. The last 30 minutes of this movie rocks totally. Yeah, it's completely. like the director fucking opened up a can of Mountain Dew and finally he decided to <laughs> yeah. do something bad as an extreme. Man, it's, it's a ba- amazing ending action sequence. And most important, Importantly, there's almost no chemistry between the characters through this movie. Like that Pepper Potts, Tony yeah. Stark chemistry in the first movie, not here at all. It's just irritating. It's like watching a bad Robert Altman film, yeah. the way they keep talking over Damn. each other. Yeah. But then late, when you get to the end, suddenly that chemistry is there with James Rhodes and, and, and Tony Stark, where you're like fighting them, watch them fight side by side and trading barbs. And, that, and it's yeah. funny and awesome and, and makes the whole movie worth it. That's very saying. true, but it's, it, for me at least, it was a little too late. It's, it's funny now that I'm honestly really thinking about this movie and I, I wish there was a lot of this movie just cut out uh, because I had the, the biggest problem I had with this movie is like every single character is so goddamn smarmy 
I mean, every bit of dialogue in this film, it's like, you know, they're, they're yucking it up. I mean, nobody, it felt like nobody was really taking the, anything that was going on all that serious. Well, they I, are in I, the comic books. So. You know what? I, 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 I think I know what you're talking about. Because I, I actually I liked it throughout the movie, even the slow parts. They didn't bother me so much because I, I liked the interplay between characters, and, and they were jokey a little bit too much sometimes. Mm-hmm. But it's in the climax, that last thirty minutes, where they're still doing the joking around, and it suddenly takes away the feeling of consequences yeah. to or everything any, that happened. Yeah, you been, know what? You have a huge that. body count. Yeah. In what happens? Like a lot of innocent people should have been killed. And they would like cracking jokes and like, well, we're okay. No, the, you you're right about that. That maybe that's why I found that ending silly. First of all, as you say, that Tin Man stuff. I mm-hmm. there's a lot of cool visuals mm-hmm. as far as the what makes sense with that scene or if is does it is there any real chemistry? Well, maybe that's a little bit too much because yeah, they they don't seem to be scared at all. No. I mean, it's like damn, I, Tony Stark is a little just too confident. Mm-hmm. I mean, even the moment that he's, for example. Uh, it's all in that last 30 minutes that we do get that chemistry between people. You right. say mm-hmm. with, with uh, 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 Donald Trump and, 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 and Tony Stark. Mm-hmm. And then that whole thing with Gwyneth Paltrow, it wasn't in Pepper Potts and yeah. this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I loved it in that first movie, the kind of dialogue they had. Oh, yeah. It was before. great. And they did not, they hard, they did that in a little bit of this movie, but it's at the end that they really bought that spark back. And it's only after Tony Stark gets through fighting all these robots mm-hmm. and he comes in and says, Hey, where, how you doing? Yeah. <laughs> well, I saved you again. Right, well, I, it's like one of those, like, look, I'm going to fuck somebody because <laughs> yeah. I just did all this and you're here. And you're here. <laughs> but, you know, there are those things there. I mean, there there are those relationships. Gwyneth Paltrow returns as a character that we like and that we like the relationship between them. That's good. Uh, Don Cheadle comes in and is a great replacement for See, uh, you know, Howard. I was just going to say, like, um, I guess you guys don't agree with me, but I thought Terrence Howard was better. I, I really felt more with him than with Don Cheadle. I think, but, but you know why? Probably because Terrence Howard had more to do in the first one. Yeah, it was a better written part in the yeah, first well, one. Yeah. But yeah. I'd say as an actual performance of what he had to do, I like Cheadle better. Yeah, I, no, did. I, I don't know. I don't that, give Terrence Howard any ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not against Terrence Howard. I just like yeah. Don Cheadle. I, like, when I say replacement, I don't mean that Terrence Howard is a bad actor. I'm saying, you know, Don Cheadle came in. And he didn't mess anything up. He replaced that part. I mean, you really. <laughs> he drove the suit just fine. Yeah, he did. I mean, you know, you expect somebody to come in and it is kind of, it's off putting when you yeah. see somebody who, who's playing another character. Right. Mm-hmm. And Terrence Howard did play that character well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're thinking like Don Cheadle, you're not going to be able to accept this guy because we remember Terrence Howard too much. Well, Don Cheadle did a good enough job to where it's like, okay, I can accept this. And I, he's I think, so well spoken. I, I think of him, I think. Uh, <laughs> It's terrible. It's terrible, sir. Uh, I think of him as like the Val Kilmer when Val Kilmer took over Batman. I liked his Bruce Wayne, but uh, I really didn't care too much for his Batman. He was just kind of there in the suit. And that's kind of and that's kind of kind of how, how I felt with Don Cheeto. So. Now let's let's talk about Mickey Rourke in this because I thought Mickey Rourke. I thought he was great as a villain. I, he came in because he did the accent well. Sure. Of course, I don't know any Russian. I mean, I was well, plus, so. well he I, I don't it. think it matters if you could because you couldn't understand no. what he was saying. No. So much of it was... Well, he was speaking a lot of, yeah. uh, a lot yeah. of Russian. Yeah, a lot, yeah. a lot of times it was Russian, but then I, I go like, wait, I heard an English word in there. You come from a family of thieves and butchers. And now, like all guilty men, you try to rewrite your own history. And you forget all the lives the Stark family has destroyed. Speaking of thieves, where did you get this design? My father, Anton Uncle. Well, I never heard of him. My father is the reason you're alive. The reason I'm alive is because you had a shot, you took it, you missed. Did I? He's just, he's just, he this just, is the way he talks. His lips are finally melting. He probably no Russian. Hey, Leon, he fooled my ass because honestly, yeah, I thought he was like the strongest element to this movie as really? far as like somebody well, kind of, I, I can't agree well, with that. Now, uh, all he I, did was glower. He just like, see, but he, he was a plot but, device. Yeah, he wasn't even a character. Not, well, but I thought I thought he was his own character. Where I didn't think he was popping off jokes like everyone else in the film, and he seemed to have some kind of real motivation. And you, I actually liked his character in the film. So shockingly enough, I was yeah. ex- I was expecting him to be just a throwaway character. I really liked his character in the movie, and yeah. that's my problem. I thought he was. I thought, like I said, I thought his accent was great. Mm-hmm. I thought he had some real motivation, as you say. I felt like he was really pissed off at Tony Stark, and he was intimidating because of that. Now the problem with that is he's an intimidating he's an intimidating guy, 
they put his ass in a lab for the middle of the movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what that that he's behind a computer yeah, for yeah, most yeah. of they, it. They, 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 you know, he disappears. They go talk to Samuel Jackson and, and Scarlett Johansson and all this other stuff is going on. And by the time they got back to him, I was like, oh, I forgot he was in this. Well, and yeah. even then, anytime he actually is there to fight, he's kind of a pussy. He's not really much of a threat. He looks like a threat, but then they're like, boom, you're down. Yeah, he's a threat <laughs> at first because they're just so like, what the fuck? is this but you know what? Can, can you say that can you can you really c- complain all that much about his character because i mean i thought that was kind of the same problem with tony tony stark or at least uh robert downey jr's uh role as far as you see him as iron man like the first like f- like 30 40 minutes but after that it's 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 pretty much a tony stark movie until yeah. the end i think the best character in this film though is definitely scarlett johansson don't you think I, I think her ass. Oh no, I'm sorry. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> oh, yeah. Boobs and, and ass. Right. That's the best boobs and ass. You know, I actually like her. You know who, who really shined in all? She was she was really great in her fighting well, sequences, you, you, though. No, they no, were those were fantastic. Impressive. They were impressive. To be honest, I thought that that fight sequence was probably the best fight sequence out of the whole movie. Absolutely, it was. Oh, easily out of the whole. Movie. And it was like one of the best. You talk about with Scarlett seen. Johansson, yeah. Scarlett yeah. Johansson, yeah. Best Black I've Widow, seen it in probably in a year. What was really inventive martial arts and the way they filmed it, and you're like, I want to see more of this character doing this type of stuff. Stuff. Which is another and that's problem. How we got which which <laughs> yeah. is another problem because this isn't a Black Widow movie. This is yeah. an Iron Man movie, and I honestly w- was hoping to be ex- as excited watching Iron Man do his thing, especially with War Machine. But I didn't get that so much. I got little hints of it, but I'm like, I'm ready for these guys to really go at it. And this movie needs to be another hour long for me to, you know, get more of that. But I, it I just don't doesn't yeah. deliver. I don't think Scarlett Johansson was the strongest character, but <laughs> no, be, she I, wasn't. I, I'd be <laughs> damned if I look at Scarlett Johansson and right when you think she's that girl, right when you say she can't get no finer, she finds something to wear that just puts her ass out a little bit more. Yeah. You're like, Jesus Christ, girl, you're killing me. <laughs> yeah, every I salute scene, her ass, I salute her breast, I salute every that black every suit scene. Suit. It's just building, you know, and that yeah. moment when Tony Stark goes, I want her, want one. Can I have one? You're going, yeah, me too. Yeah, and she, and Where do I sign? And she is another Avengers <laughs> drop in. She's a character from the comics. Uh, Nat- what's her name? Natasha Romanoff, who is yeah. who is the uh, Black the, Widow, the Black, the Black Widow. Which, so. okay, and like to me, like it's like I still like this movie, but it it misses a lot of opportunities. And one big one is that the character in the comic books is Russian, and then you have a villain who's Russian. Yeah, I, I didn't like, understand here's a, here's that. A perfect at all. chance to play these two things off of each yeah. other, and they don't take it. I was waiting don't. for them to go there. I was like, oh, this is. Going to be good because these two things are going to tie together, and it will make sense for them to both be in the right. same movie. And they're like, "Wait, what just happened? Why? Why would you really not see that?" And there's a lot of this film that feels like a lot of disparate parts that no one found a way to fit nestle com- comfortably mm-hmm. with each other. Yeah. And that's that's really, I think, the biggest problem with this movie is that it does. It feels like a bunch of sequences, a bunch of parts, bunch of right. parts to an unfinished story, and maybe that's exactly what it is. Yeah, it, I, it's an uh, unfinished Iron Man. Yeah. No, this, this Iron Man should have been like an Iron Man. TV show. <laughs> you know, well, you know, maybe if it was in episodes, I'd like it even more. And you know something? I, another character that I did like uh, was was Justin Hammer, uh, played by Sam Rockwell. Yeah. Sam Rockwell. Sam Rockwell. When he came in, I mean, he played it kind of geeky and kind of creepy, but I like that about him. I mean, I, well, that's what Sam Rockwell does. He, he does that well. Without, <laughs> with, and without him being any kind of, I mean, he's like I say, he's another. He's a counter industrialist to Tony Stark, but he has no powers except being an asshole. <laughs> and I was like, wow, this guy is probably not as even as much of an asshole as Tony Stark is. Mm-hmm. And I, and, and I yeah, like that about it. He kind of was in his own. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's a well, villain nonetheless. But the problem is like, like he's an egocentric asshole, super rich asshole, but he doesn't have the skills to back it up. <laughs> yeah. Stark, you know, talks a lot of shit, but then he's like, well, here. And they're like, oh, well, okay. I, just, <laughs> I guess I just felt <laughs> yeah. bad for him because right, I felt right. like Tony Stark, he was such an asshole that right. whatever he came around, this guy Justin Hammond he's like, yeah, bitch, don't you wish you had yeah. what I had? <laughs> yeah. You ain't shit. No, you're you're well, right. So yeah, they, you, yeah, you, but you they, do. They, they make you, like, like I felt that too, and Sam Rockwell as Justin Hammer, he was great when he was creepy or just incompetent or kind of an asshole, but then the longer he goes on, the more he becomes kind of a boob to the almost to the point of where like wait this guy's too incompetent for the government to really yeah. be relying how's he yeah. supposed to be a threat later which right. he is right. in the books he's most definitely oh, yeah, a most definitely, major yeah. threat later yeah, it's like, he's a this guy in the book that like he's in several comics right oh, oh yeah, yeah he's a long time yeah. running character but it's like you know you've made him incompetent to the point that he's right. just here yeah. for comic relief which, which, like, I, which I, I thought that's what made him not 
not a, a, an effective uh, villain enough for me to like wonder. Okay, now scratch my head. Like, who is the the real villain here? You know, um, like I said, people. it's I'm telling you, it's Tony Stark. That was they looked at this movie and they said it's man versus himself is the what's going on here. It's and Christian that's how Slater they were, my own worst enemy. Yeah, that's how they that's how they rationalized making no strong villain here. Is they're like Tony Stark is his own worst enemy. Yeah, and yeah. and the thing is, like like I said about the first film, I thought that movie suffered from a weak villain, and, and I have to admit that the second film. It, it has that same problem. It really well, it, just no, suffers it, from a uh, lack of a real villain. Well, you know what? No, they, they, it, it's funny because they said, okay, we got a great villain in this one. We just don't use him that much. <laughs> yeah, we're we going to put his ass. <laughs> no, actually, yeah. he's a cool ass villain, mm-hmm. Mickey Rourke, and mm-hmm. they actually put him in a laboratory for the middle of the movie, mm-hmm. complete with wearing nerdy glasses yeah. and working on little shit. Like, oh, him hey, him no, and his assistant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, him and his assistant. Yeah, him and his assistant. Yeah, yeah, him and his assistant fucking bird who's wearing a lab <laughs> suit. Like, actually, you see the bird actually putting the robots together. <laughs> Interesting. I'm like, wow. Yeah, all of a Does sudden. Does this happen in the Avengers, Leon? <laughs> all of a sudden, that Joppo and Iago. <laughs> yeah, I was just pissed because it was a parrot in the Avengers. Yeah. So, uh, I'm a bit of a cannon. Whore, I know. <laughs> well, you know what, man? I, I'll go ahead and get my rating. I, as much as I'm complaining about this movie, I did enjoy it. The thing is, is that where the first Iron Man was a summer movie with a great character and a, and a great story up until probably its climax, this one, like a lot of sequels, is just a good summer movie. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's a good summer special effects movie. Nothing special about it. I'll give it a matinee. Oh, I was going to say. I don't know. Wait, everybody, everybody looking. I was like, what's up? Look at that. Oh, uh-huh. sorry. Waiting for the other shooter drop. You're like, come on. You know you want it. No, the you suspense can- is killing you. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, this is like the very definition of sequelitis in some ways. I hate that word, but here it's if the shoe fits, you know, and then it drops. Uh, but, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it's there's so much stuff here that I do like, and I admit a lot of that is just me being a huge dork. I've never fought that definition. But there is a lot of strength to this, and there's certainly enough to say it's an entertainment film despite some serious flaws especially more in comparison to the first one than anything else i still have to give this a matinee as well huh uh-huh. interesting uh well maybe i liked it a little bit better than you guys i mean i i'm not denying anything you said matter of fact i said most of those things myself all those flaws are here it's just that you know when i weigh it there is a lot more positive i mean the things you go to a summer film for the things you pay full price to go see during the summer it has all those elements it's just you know it, it's whereas the first Iron Man was like a movie that really bordered on, or if not, was a better than sex because it was like, wow, this movie has so many things except the wow. It just doesn't have that thing that, that makes me like have to come back and see it. But if I paid full price for it, I wouldn't leave feeling ripped off. So I'll say full price. Mm. All right. Well, I agree with a lot what you guys said. Uh, my only thing is that, yeah, it, I was expecting a little bit more. Um, but what I did see, I did have fun with. Yeah, I wish there was more Iron Man instead of uh, Tony Stark. But that's because that, you're a robot. Just, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I want to see. Yeah, I, well, that's the. Yeah, I mean, he's the fucking money shot of the whole movie. <laughs> I only see him in the beginning and the, the, the end. I but, agree with you there. But uh, yeah, but other than that, no, the the, the action sequences were really fun to watch. Uh, and and I, I did have a good time with this, despite all my complaints. So I, I'm gonna give this a matinee. All right, then. yeah. Wow. Now, were you guys kind of upset that they fucking deleted that one scene that they kept uh, showing all the time, where uh, that, it's weird that, that, where that kid, about. where that kid hanging out in the Stark Labs, he gets turned into a Dr Pepper machine? What? <laughs> uh, that, why did they cut that you out? That, 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 that was, I thought that was a whole other subplot they were gonna get into. <laughs> that should have been the end of the movie. That should have yeah. been like after the credits, where yeah. it's like they cut to a Dr Pepper machine here. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been, or that, even better, if like you know, yeah. it grows up around him and then it like starts spewing out right. blood. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can hear his bones crunching in there. It's just transforming. <laughs> yeah, Tony yeah. Stark tries to get a Dr Pepper and a hand comes out. <laughs> you guys are Shit. thinking with your head. That would have been a much cooler ending than realizing that. Oh, look in the dirt there. It's. The or if it had been Gwyneth Paltrow instead of a little kid. <laughs> oh yeah, hey, you I'm, shut I'm, up, man. I'm gonna, I, I, I love Gwyneth Paltrow. I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna cut that out. What we just said, no, so we won't spoil it for anybody. But yeah, stay after the credits uh, for some bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Stark displays textbook narcissism. Agreed.